Okay, so I'm posting this video on Christmas Day. So first, let me say Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to those of you out there. And uh, I want to especially thank those of you that uh, follow me on YouTube, those of you that subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. It's really my passion to teach math, and I really uh, try to um, kind of produce a consistent flow of interesting and valuable math videos. Okay, so whether you are a math student or if you're just interested in math, you just want to learn math or you kind of like, you know, want to do something constructive with your time, like figure out uh, math problems. Well, that's awesome. And I'm glad that you watch my videos and I'm going to really strive to uh, continue to make great content for 2023. But uh, here it is at Christmas Day. And I'm wondering, why are you watching a math video? So hopefully it's not because your presence or uh, disappointment, <laughs> but it's probably the case that you just love math so much that you're like, I got to have a daily dose of math. But whatever the case is, let's go ahead and get into this problem. So here we have uh, the word Christmas and we uh, have the letters of the word Christmas underlined. And the question is, how many ways can the letters of the word Christmas be arranged, okay? So for example, kind of think of this problem this way. So how many, well, first of all, let's count how many words we have, we, or letters we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the question is, how many different ways can we arrange these letters? It's almost like how many words can we construct with these letters? Now, of course, if we shuffle these letters around, we're not going to get actual words because nothing, some of the stuff isn't going to make sense. But that's the, kind of the way to think about the problem. So um, to uh, solve this problem, we're going to get into a topic called permutations. And I'm going to show you a formula that at first glance is going to look a little intimidating, but please don't run away. This is not that complex. But before I give you any more hints, if you think you can figure this out, go ahead and put your solution into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you the answer here in one second. And then I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit, a little Christmas story about permutations. Okay. So anyways, uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I love to teach math. I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in mathematics, but you need great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe some sort of special test that you're studying for that involves mathematics, something like the GED, SAT, ASVAB, teacher certification exam. If you homeschool uh, mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that cover all these categories. I'm also going to leave links to my uh, excellent comprehensive math notes in the description of this video. This is a really great deal uh, for those who don't have notes uh, right now. You should be taking your own math notes, but if you need a pair of notes right now, you can get my notes. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get into the holiday spirit in terms of mathematics and figure this question out. And let me go ahead and show you the answer. So how many different ways can the letters of the word Christmas be arranged? Well, here is the answer. 362, 880,000, there you go. So if you figure this out, you're like, oh, I got the right answer. Well, let me go ahead and give you a nice little Christmas day, happy face and A plus, 100% and a few stars so you can have an extra, extra special Christmas day. So uh, nice job. Now, if you had some other numbers, because, you know, you were like, okay, I know I got to do something with the number nine, you know, you know, maybe you kind of did all kinds of different calculations. Well, what uh, what's going to be required to do this problem is an understanding of something called a permutation. So in probability and counting theory, because what we're talking about is how do we count something? All right. So the topic here, the math topic is what we call counting theory. All right. And there's different um, kind of tools and, and approaches that we use. It all depends upon the situation. But um, in this particular situation, we're going to be using something called a permutation. And that's not to be confused with something called a combination. So some of you might be familiar with combinations 
or permutations, you might be familiar with just the words, right? Because it's kind of a common uh, use in uh, the English uh, English language. People are like, oh, there's different permutations we could do something or different combinations we could do something. But those have very specific mathematical kind of definitions to them. But uh, let's get into what a permutation is. Okay, so permutations. Well, permutations are counting arrangements. Okay, we want to account arrangements when the order is important, All right? Now, let me go back up here to the uh, uh, word uh, Christmas. So, uh, but before I do, let's re just review this real quick, and I'll get back to this formula, okay, in a second. So some of you might be like staring at this formula, be like, oh my goodness, this is so complicated. Don't worry, this is easy stuff. It's not that difficult, but a permutation is counting arrangements when the order is important. So let's take a look at the word Christmas, okay? We want to account uh, the, uh, um, an arrangement. Now, an arrangement is basically how can we arrange these uh, uh, letters differently, okay? Well, I could maybe put the S here. For example, I could put the C there. That would be one uh, arrangement, okay? Or maybe I can leave it as is like so, and I could switch the H and the R, that would be another arrangement. So you can see here, we can have a ton of different arrangements. Actually, specifically, that's how many arrangements we have. But if I um, you know, really focus in on what the question is asking, I'm asking, hey, how many uh, uh, ways can I combine these letters where the order is um, uh, important? Okay, that's basically the main idea. So it's almost like how many words can I construct? Unique words can I construct? So when you have that type of problem, you want to be talking, you want to be thinking about a permutation, all right? And that's something different than a combination. So you might be thinking, well, what's a combination? Let's just talk about a combination real quick, uh, just to get this out of the way. So let's say you have um, a jar of candy, and let's say I have, oh, I don't know, ten different types of candies in here. Uh, so, oh, I don't know, let's say you have some uh, uh, Snickers, Mars bar, some uh, Tootsie Rolls, uh, Lollipop, whatever the case is, right? So, uh, if the question is how many different combinations of two, of uh, if I grab two uh, pieces of candy out of here, how many different combinations could I have? Well, let's say I grab um, a uh, Snickers bar and a lollipop, okay? That would be my selection. I grab this first and then grab that second. That would be my combination. Uh, but let's say you grab the lollipop and then you also grab the next, you grabbed a Snickers bar. It doesn't make a difference. The order, uh, you know, the way we got to what's in our little hand, for example, let's say here, oh, you took the lollipop first and then the, the Tootsie Roll second. And then me, I took the Tootsie Roll first and the lollipop second. It doesn't make a difference. The order didn't make a difference because the end result is all, uh, you know, what we're focused in on. That's not the case here. Okay, order does make a difference, right? So when we're talking about selections, order makes a difference. So this is a quick um, example of why this is not a combination. We're not looking at how many different combinations of letters, you know, or words we can form with these letters. It's how many specific ordered arrangements, okay? The order is important. And I'm really driving that home because I want you to understand what this word permutation mean, means because you're going to see this um, uh, as you continue to study more advanced mathematics. Hopefully, uh, you're encouraged to study more math, but I'm talking about things like probability theory, counting theory. This comes up with basic data and statistics type of um, uh topics in various math courses, right? So you don't have to take a full-on probability or statistics course to run into permutations and combinations. But anyways, that's what uh, this is, uh, that's what the topic is. It's a permutation. So now that we know that this is a permutation, i.e. We're, we're counting arrangements, in this case, we're counting the letter, okay, the arrangements of the letters, and the order is definitely important. So uh, what is a permutation mathematically? Well, here it is, okay? So let me just go ahead and read you the formula, and then I'm going to explain the formula. So this, we, the way we say this is NPK, all right? Or, uh, uh, well, that will just leave it like that. NPK is equal to N factorial over N minus K, all this in parentheses, factorial. So again, a good way to think of permutations is an ordered combination, 
All right, well, what is the N and what is a K? If, don't worry about this little exclamation stuff here. I'm going to explain this uh, to you in a second. So N is N objects, okay? So how many objects do we have here? We have nine letters, okay? Nine letters and uh, the word Christmas. And K is how many of these letters we're going to take at a time. So for example, if I asked you um, uh, not how many different arrangements we could have out of the word Christmas, what if I said how many different three-letter arrangements could we have? Okay, so uh, in that case, I would only be using three letters out of the total of nine. But in this particular problem, we're going to be using all nine letters. Okay, so that's what the K is. So um, oftentimes, you're going to be solving problems where you're given nine things, and you're going to want to just see you know, how many different arrangements, ordered arrangements, ordered arrangements you could have that are less than the total number of objects you have, right? But here is the formula. And for those of you who have um, an advanced calculator, something like a TI-83 or 84, some sort of graphing calculator, uh, I don't know if a scientific calculator would have uh, these functions. May, some uh, probably do, but definitely uh, more advanced graphing calculators. You can find... Um, all these probability permutation combination um, functions in your calculator. But I'm going to show you how to uh, calculate this just using a formula and just good old straight uh, mathematics. So let's go ahead and get into this now. All right, so again, Christmas has uh, nine letters in it. So we're going to take nine objects, which are these letters. Okay, we are out of nine objects, nine letters, uh, taken nine at a time. How many ordered arrangements uh, can we construct? Well, this is the situation. It's a permutation. It's 9P9. So let's go ahead and figure this out. Okay. All right. So again, we have nine objects, nine letters. We're going to take uh, all nine of them at a time. So N, okay, is nine and K is nine as well. So we need to plug this into this formula and work out this math. Okay. So here it is. NPK is equal to N factorial over N minus K factorial. So this is 9P9 is equal to uh, N factorial. So that's 9 factorial. Again, some of you are like, what is that factorial? I'm going to explain that in one second. Just one second. So N minus K is going to be 9 minus 9 factorial. So this is all going to end up being 9 factorial over 0 factorial. This will tell us the answer. Okay, so now, finally, what is this factorial business? If you've never seen this before, it's not that difficult. So 9 factorial, okay, again, you can go into your calculator and get, uh, the, um, you know, some of you that have those more advanced calculators, you'll see, you'll see that this is the actual uh, value for 9 factorial. I'm going to show you what that means here in just one second. 0 factorial is 1, and this is the final answer, 362, 880,000. All right, so what is zero factorial? All right, well, zero factorial by definition is one, but that still doesn't explain what a factorial is. This right here will show you what a factorial is. So let's take a number, for example, nine factorial. What does that mean? Well, all of this means is take the number, okay, in this case it's nine, and then we're going to start counting down by one, okay? Uh, and we're going to hit count down and put these numbers, and we're going to create one gigantic product. So this is going to be 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, we're going to go all the way down to 1. This is the definition of factorial. So 4 factorial would be what? 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. You simply just go ahead and do that math and you would have the value for 4 factorial. So you can see that these numbers get um, pretty large uh, uh, rather quickly, okay? But anyways, this is all that function means in mathematics, this factorial function. So 9 factorial, you know, if you don't have one of those fancy calculators, you would simply just go in and, and you know, start finding the product of that. You can find the product of these numbers, find the product of these numbers, multiply them together, and when you do that, you will get uh, this a number right here, 362,880,000, uh, okay? Or sorry, uh, 362,880. Boy, I tell you, I'm making up all kinds of crazy numbers, probably because I'm excited because it's Christmas. But anyways, uh, some of you might be saying, well, what about zero that, you know, we can't count down from zero. 
Well, zero is the exception in terms of factorial because it doesn't follow this pattern. So by definition, zero factorial is one. And you can certainly run into zero factorial as we uh, did in this problem because we have to we had that zero factorial in our denominator. So zero factorial is one. So uh, it's simply going to be this number divided by one, which of course is the answer. Okay, so we kind of covered a pretty decent amount of stuff here. Really, what I was trying to uh, get you to uh, understand is the essence or um, kind of the basics of permutations versus combinations. Now, combinations work in a very similar kind of way, okay? There's a, uh, a formula for combinations. It looks kind of like this and it involves uh, factorials, but uh, when it comes to counting things, all right, uh, counting problems, you're gonna be running into permutations, combinations, things like uh, counting trees and whatnot. It's a pretty uh, interesting topic and certainly uh, if you take probability or statistics, you're definitely gonna see this. But anyways, that is my little Christmas present to you. And uh, again, I want to especially thank you uh, uh, for following me if you do subscribe to me. And maybe, you know, uh, you weren't a subscriber uh, when this video started. And maybe I earned uh, your um, subscribership, if that is the case. I want to thank you very much. I've been on YouTube for a long, long time. And uh, it really is my uh, passion to help as many people as I possibly can with mathematics. But uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Happy holidays and uh, have a great day.